Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. Today we will begin with the next module that is introduction to electromagnetic interference. Electromagnetic interference is a very important problem to be solved in power electronic converters. To understand what is electromagnetic interference, let us see an example. The basis of electromagnetic interference is electromagnetic wave. You might be already familiar with uh, what is an electromagnetic wave. So, electromagnetic wave has got electric field and magnetic fields perpendicular to each other. So, that is if we have on um, x axis that means this plane you have got the electric field varying and parallel to the y axis plane that means the over here if you have the magnetic field varying. So, they are perpendicular to each other and on this direction that means perpendicular to both of them is the direction in which the wave propagates. And uh, some of the important terms related with it are the wavelength and the speed of the wave and also the frequency. So, you might be already familiar that uh, C equal to F into lambda where C is the speed, F is the frequency and lambda is the wavelength. Now, what we observe is that so frequency and the wavelength they are inversely proportional. So, as your frequency increases your wavelength reduces. So, if the frequency is low that means the wavelengths are going to be very long. So, for electromagnetic interference the range of frequency which are of concern are high frequencies that means in the range of kilohertz hundreds of kilohertz and above and especially in the range of megahertz are the frequency range in the electromagnetic spectrum which are of concern and which create electromagnetic interference. So, let us understand the phenomena of electromagnetic interference if we let us say have two conductors close to each other. Let us say this is one conductor which is carrying some current and is having some noise in it. So, this is you can say that this is the source of noise. Then there is another conductor, let us say it is a shielded conductor and uh, it has uh, got uh, two wires inside it, one is which carries the current and another is the return path and that let us say is grounded and the shield is also grounded. So, what will happen is that that this whatever is the current that is flowing through this conductor if it is varying then it will produce a magnetic field which will be also varying and this varying magnetic field will induce voltages in these conductors and as the circuit is going to be closed so they will have their own currents because of those induced voltages. So, this is what we see that that if you have a current carrying conductor in the vicinity, so you will be having voltages induced because of them. Further, these two points, I mean between these two conductors, any of these two conductors, there will be a capacitance. 
Now you may say that that uh, I am not able to see any physical capacitance over there because you might have seen a capacitor it looks like a cylinder if it is electrolytic or you might have seen ceramic capacitors whatever capacitor that you might have seen in the labs uh, your imagination may be of that that is what a capacitor is. But actually capacitance is formed whenever there is potential difference between any two points. And obviously, there will be a dielectric medium which is your air in this case. So, you have two points where there is potential difference and there is a dielectric medium that is air in between them. So, there uh, will be a formation of a capacitor. Although you may not be able to see that capacitor physically, but there is capacitance between them. So, that is the capacitance which we are talking about here that uh, you will have uh, uh, capacitance between these two, between this conductor and this shield and also between these two conductors and further uh, between these as well. So, we will have capacitances over here in between and since there is a potential difference in the capacitor, so there will be a capacitive current which also will be flowing through it and so this also is going to create a disturbance. So, what we observe is that because of this noise source there is disturbance in the operation of the second conductor which you can call it as the victim. So, there is a source and then there is a victim. So, we can say that electromagnetic interference is the disturbance in the operation of one system due to electromagnetic impact from another system or electromagnetic impact of the same system. When we say that electromagnetic impact of the same system what we mean is that if say let us say you have a big system like if you have a power electronic converter. So, it may be having different sections in it, different parts in it and one part may be generating noise and that noise may be affecting the functioning of another part. So, that is like the system creating disturbance with itself due to the same system it is happening. So, that is also interference, electromagnetic interference. Now, electromagnetic interference in short it is called as EMI. So, in this example what we saw is your inductive coupling and capacitive coupling and through wires your disturbance or your interference is going to travel from the source to the victim. But the disturbance can also travel through air via electromagnetic waves. Now, you may again say that that for waves to travel we need uh, first of all antennas which will be transmitting the waves and then there should be a receiver antenna which we should be able to receive the electromagnetic wave. Well, that is what when we intentionally want a wave to be transmitted and travel and then to be received. But unintentionally also when we have metallic conductors, wires, they all sort of form an inefficient antennas. They are also antennas, but they are not efficient, they are not intentional. They also to some extent have the ability to transmit electromagnetic waves. And so then they will be radiating those uh, electromagnetic waves, they will travel through space that means through air and then they can be received by the metallic structures that may be present in adjacent, so uh, adjacent systems that may be there and then when they are received they can cause disturbance in them as well. So, that is the interference is happening via radiation. So, therefore, there are two types of EMI, one is your conducted EMI and second is radiated EMI. Now, you may be wondering that uh, why in power electronics it is so important to pay attention to EMI problem. So, for that let us recall the waveforms that we have uh, studied for edge bridge converters. Now, this is the waveform that uh, we saw as the output voltage waveform for uh, bipolar PWM in edge bridge. So, what we see is that that here the voltage changes from plus VDC to minus VDC. 
plus Vdc and minus Vdc it keeps on changing and here in between there is a fast transition very quick transition from your plus Vdc to minus Vdc. And then further uh, what we see here are the DC bus currents where also we see that that here again we see that the current changes from your output current plus IO to minus IO and that transition also takes place in a very very short interval of time. And these are basically decided by the rise times and fall times of the switches which are in the order of uh, nanoseconds or microseconds. Further this is what we had seen as your switch voltages. So, here again we see that the voltage changes from plus Vdc to 0 and in a very short interval of time these transitions take place. They again these are also another set of switch voltages again we see the same thing. Then the switch currents if we observe that again the same that there is a huge transition in the current. Uh, that means it is going from your plus IO to 0 in a very short interval of time and the same what we see for your diode currents as well. So, from this what we understand is that that in power electronic converters there are transitions in the voltage changes in the voltages and currents by huge level in very very short period of time. So, there are huge di by dt's and dv by dt's rate of change of current and rate of change of voltages are very high in power electronic converters. So, that is because of the sudden change in voltage or current plus uh, uh, these uh, may be running generators or motors or um, and that means your vehicles. So, there may be sparks also in them. So, that also is a source where suddenly voltages are changing very quickly. So, that also will lead to lot of your uh, transient voltages and currents. And of course, there may be other transients and disturbances that may be associated with the power electronic converters. Now, so if we have a huge transient like this, then that may be because let us say of a sudden change in voltage. So, if you do a fast Fourier transform of it, what you will be observing are certain frequency components which may be of very high frequency range. So, this may be very high, this f may be high. Okay. You may be of course, having some low frequency components as well. So, this is uh, your uh, fast Fourier transform nature I am showing. So, if we have these uh, high frequencies present due to these kind of transitions that may be sudden change in voltages and currents that may be taking place. So, they will be a source of electromagnetic interference and that is why in power electronics we pay much so much attention to the problem of EMI because power electronic converters act as a big source of interference. This picture shows the frequency spectrum obtained from the current of a inverter. So, uh, this is expressed in micro ampere decibels and uh, here you can see that uh, the frequencies that are shown this current noise that is shown the, the corresponding frequencies here you can see that that this lie in the megahertz range. So, here this is 0.1 megahertz, 1 megahertz and 10 megahertz and so forth. So, this are very high frequencies that means very high frequency noise is present due to power electronic converters. It may be in the currents as well as in the voltages. Now, what are the frequency ranges which are of concern and we should be paying attention to and sort of kind of filter out those frequencies if they are present in power electronic converters. So, we can divide them in three parts. So, the three uh, spectrum parts which are important for us to understand. 
one is this frequency range which is 50 hertz to 2 kilohertz. This can be told as the harmonics range. So, if you observe the voltage that may be coming to your home, you may be observing something like this. That means, you would like to have a very nice sinusoid, but it may not be a proper sinusoid that may be the supply that may be coming to your home, but a, a, a one which is slightly distorted from it. So, that means what? So, those distortions, these distortions that you are seeing, these are because of the harmonics, the low frequency harmonics or relatively the uh, higher frequency harmonics in this range of up till 2 kilohertz are what are present in those waveforms. They may be there in the voltage, they may also be present in the current. So, this reduce the power quality. So, this is associated with power quality. And uh, there are ways to improve power quality, which uh, we are not going to discuss here. So, uh, for you to understand here is was that that your 50 hertz to 2 kilohertz is the frequency range. If we have those frequencies present in the converter waveforms, then they will lead to power quality issues and so those harmonics should be removed to improve the power quality. Then the other frequency range which is of great importance is from one, about 150 kilohertz to 1 gigahertz. And 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz is the range where uh, we have conducted EMI. This is the frequency range if we have noise present in the waveforms in this frequency range. So then through wires, through cables those disturbances can transfer to other parts of the same system or to different systems and cause interference. So, they will lead to conducted EMI. And if we have noise or disturbances present above that in the range of 30 megahertz to 1 gigahertz, then they can radiate that means they can transmit electromagnetic waves and then that will lead to radiated interference in this range 30 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. So, from EMI perspective this 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz and 30 megahertz to 1 gigahertz is of importance. Now, when we say that interference can happen, so then we have to make converters which are compatible for electromagnetic interference. That means, they should have electromagnetic compatibility which in short is also called as EMC. So, there are three things, one is source that means there is a source which is going to emit or create the problem of EMI and there will be a coupling path or a transfer path via which the interference or the disturbance is going to travel and then there will be a receptor or receiver which is uh, going to be affected by the problem of interference. So, we can say that that uh, the problem of uh, I mean there can be three criteria by which we can say that that uh, the system is uh, electromagnetically compatible with its environment. One is it is not creating interference with other systems. Second, it is not susceptible to emissions from other systems it should not at the first place create emissions, create disturbance and second if disturbances are coming from other places it should not get affected by that and third it should not create interference with itself. One part of the same system should not create interference with another part of that system. And uh, how do we do that? One is we suppress the emission at the source. So, uh, we ensure that we take such measures by which the problem of interference is not created by the converter that we are designing. Second is that that we make the coupling path inefficient that means the transfer path is very inefficient so uh, it would not be able to transmit and third is that the receptor is less susceptible to emissions that means if it is receiving the receiver is such that it does not receive 
the outside interference or disturbances. So, uh, mostly in this course uh, I will give you ideas of how to suppress the emission at the source. That means, how do you design the power electronic converter such that, that it is not uh, creating the problem of electromagnetic interference. However, the other two measures are also very important, but uh, it is beyond the scope of this course. This is not a dedicated course on uh, electromagnetic compatibility. Electromagnetic compatibility is a very huge topic and is a course in itself and we are not uh, going into those steps. Here I will introduce you what is electromagnetic interference, how do you measure it and uh, then further we will be looking into uh, some of uh, those design concepts which you can apply in power electronic converters to reduce the emission from them. So, the key points of this lecture are there is problem of electromagnetic interference in power electronic converters and it is mainly because of the nature of waveforms which have very high d i by d t's and d v by d t's present in them basically switched voltages and switched currents they are the main source of EMI in power electronic converters. And we have two types of them conducted and radiated. Conducted means it travels through wires and conductors and radiated means it uh, travels through air and cause disturbance. And uh, there is a particular frequency spectrum a range of frequencies which are of importance for uh, assessing the electromagnetic compatibility with respect to your uh, this problem of interference. And as I said this electromagnetic compatibility means um, how much the system is not affected by interference of any sort. Thank you.